guess who's back? Some of you have been commenting that my zero to 60 times seem a little slow. For example, Jerry Nasowski says, factory, these are 5.1 seconds zero to 60, lol. A good cutesy says, six seconds double question mark, that's kind of high. Newfie Dean says, can't believe you were not sub five seconds for zero to 60 given your mods. FW879 says, your shirt looks like a dish rag. The point is, anybody who has mentioned that my 0 to 60 times seem a little slow, well they're correct. According to Wikipedia, this car should be able to get from 0 to 60 miles an hour in 5.6 seconds. While Motor Trend reports that they have done it in 5.1, Car and Driver says 5.4, and Edmund says they do it in the high 5 second range, regardless that these times are kind of all over the place, Given that my fully bolted Mustang GT puts down 327 horsepower to the wheels, which is way above stock, I should be smoking all those times. But I'm not. My best zero to 60 so far is only about five and a half seconds. So what gives? Maybe you're just not a very good driver, bro. Thanks, dude. It's a big mother fumble, fumble, big goddamn. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, well, I live up in the... Okay, well, I live... Well, I live up in the mountains at an elevation of about 4,500 feet where the air is quite a bit thinner than it is at sea level. But what exactly does that mean, thinner? In the context of talking about our atmosphere, thinner just means less dense. You see, the higher you go, the more the gases that make up our atmosphere spread apart. Ever left a tasty juice in the fridge for a long time and notice its ingredients had settled at the bottom of the bottle? Well, that's not what we're talking about here. Our atmosphere is actually really homogenous all the way up to 60 miles above the Earth's surface, which just means that you're gonna find roughly 21% oxygen and 78% nitrogen at sea level, at 4,500 feet, at 30,000 feet, and even way higher. So although our atmosphere is made up of pretty much the same stuff, 60 miles and below, it becomes less dense the further you get away from the Earth's surface due to reduced air pressure. And the reduced air pressure is just a result of there being less air above this air, weighing down on it and pushing the gases together. Okay, 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 I don't wanna take you guys back to middle school science class, so let me attempt to put this into terms that car enthusiasts can better relate to. When you press down on the gas pedal in your car, the throttle body opens the butterflies allowing air into the engine so it can make explosions. But air only goes into the engine because the outside air pressure is higher than it is in the intake manifold. Now at sea level, there's 14.7 pounds per square inch of air pressure, PSI, a unit I know you're familiar with. And where I live, there's only 12.5 PSI of air pressure. This means that when I push down on my gas pedal and the butterflies open up, air is literally pushed into my engine with less force than it is at sea level. I'm effectively running negative 2.2 pounds of boost. Woo! Okay, so why does lower air pressure decrease a vehicle's ability to produce power? Well, most vehicles on the road have combustion engines, which require three essential ingredients to run. One, they need a fuel source, typically gasoline or diesel. Two, they need a heat source, like a spark plug. And three, they need air. But the only part of the air that an engine cares about is the oxygen. And the more oxygen you're able to stuff into an engine, the more power it'll make. So since the higher you go in our atmosphere, there's not only less air pressure pushing air into an engine, that air also has lower oxygen density. This decreased input yields a decreased output. So we get lower oxygen coming into the engine, the engine makes a weaker explosion, and we get lower power output giving us a slower vehicle. So cars are faster at sea level because high air pressure allows engines at that altitude to take in more oxygen and create more powerful explosions. So to find out how fast my car really is, I've come down to the California coast here 
where there is significantly higher air pressure and thus more oxygen per given unit of volume. These conditions should allow my car to produce at least 15 to 20 percent more power than it does back up in Reno. We're going to do the same two acceleration tests we did in the last video, which is a 0 to 60 and a 20 to 80, and then we'll compare those times against the ones we did in the stage two video to find out how much of a difference altitude makes in terms of acceleration. So let's go find a back road where we can do our experiment in peace. to do the 20 to 80. up in Reno and I just got done editing the acceleration footage and I'm pretty happy with the results. So up here in Reno at 4,500 feet my best 0 to 60 so far is 5.63 seconds. At sea level I was able to do that in 4.87 seconds. A pretty large difference around three-fourths of a second. As for the 20 to 80 my best time up here is 7.57 seconds and at sea level I was able to do it in 6.57 seconds, a reduction of one whole second. So in conclusion, I think these results clearly show that elevation has a significant impact on a vehicle's ability to produce power. Now of course, there is one type of vehicle that's immune to these atmospheric discrepancies, but we'll talk about those cars another time. Mm -hmm.